Hello everyone, welcome to our tutorial. This video is all about the double output machine. Before proceeding to the problem, an arrangement in which when two objects of unequal mass are hung vertically over a frictionless pulley of negligible mass is called an Atwood machine. This device is sometimes used in the laboratory to calculate the value of G. What we need to find is the different accelerations of the different masses on a double Atwood's machine. So the first thing that we will be doing is to illustrate a free body diagram. For the free body diagram or FBD, there are three blocks shown in the figure and in each block there are two pulleys respectively that pulls the blocks using strings. For the FBD of block 1 and 2, they have the same pulley which is the pulley A. Therefore, they have the same tension. For block 1, the EFX is equal to 0 while EFY is equal to tension A minus weight 1. While for block 2, EFX is equal to 0 and EFY is equal to tension A minus weight 2. For the FBD for block 3, it only has one pulley, so this block will have a different tension. EFX is equal to 0, while EFY is tension B minus weight 3. For the FBD for pulley A, it pulls two blocks, which are the blocks 1 and 2. And in these blocks, they have the same tension. In the shown figure, pulley A is being pulled by pulley B, which is the tension B. EFX is equal to 0, and the EFY is equal to tension B minus 2 tension A. For the FPD for pulley B, there is a handle that pulls all the blocks, and this is the tension B C. But we will neglect this FBD as we only need the acceleration of each block. The equation for block 1 to F3 is based on Newton's second law of motion. That's why it's MA. For block 1, M sub 1 times A sub 1 is equal to tension A minus M sub 1 times G. For block 2, M sub 2 times A sub 2 is equal to tension A minus M sub 2 times G. For block 3, M sub 3 times A sub 3 is equal to tension B minus M sub 3 times G. For block A, based on the description of the output machine, the mass of the pulley is 0. That's why 0 is equal to tension B minus 2t sub a and lastly for block b we focus on finding the acceleration of the masses of the blocks that's why we neglect it there are five equations total we already got the four equations to solve for this problem the last one is to get the relationship of acceleration of three different masses in every pulley there is a corresponding rope with constant length and we will be finding the length of each ropes. The length found in pulley B to pulley A is expressed as YA. The length from pulley A to block 1 is expressed as Y1. The length found in pulley A to block 2 is expressed as Y2. The length found in pulley B to block 3 is expressed as YP. Now, we will be solving the length of each ropes. In every pulley, there will be a corresponding equation. In pulley A, the equation will be the quantity of Y1 minus YA plus y2 minus ya is equals to length of the rope found in pulley a the equation found in pulley b will be ya plus y3 is equals to the length of the rope found in pulley b the both equations will be derived twice to get the relationship of acceleration of three different masses the derivative of 
distance with respect to time is velocity so the equation 5.1 will now be VA plus V3 equals to 0 and equation 5.2 will now be V1 minus VA plus V2 minus VA is equals to 0 now we will be deriving both equations again to get the relationship of acceleration of three different masses equation 5.1 will now be a a plus a3 equals to zero and equation 5.2 will now be a1 minus a a plus a2 minus a a is equals to zero now we will combine both equations and the result will be a1 plus a2 is equals to negative 2 a3 and now we will be finding the value of a3 using the equations we have derived from the free body diagram it would be a long process if we find the value of a3 that's why we have to be patient use equations 1 and 2 and substitute it to equation 5 in equations 1 and 2 get their acceleration and substitute it to equation 5 then simplify the equation and next thing to do is substitute equations 3 and 4 to the previous equation you have simplified find the value of ta in equation 3 and substitute Find the value of TB in equation 4 and substitute. Simplify the equation and make sure you have observed the properties of the basic operations. Isolate the terms that has A3 on it. Factor out the acceleration and simplify. Remain the variable A3 by dividing the side that has A3 by itself except A3. And after, you can cancel out 2, M1, M2, and simplify. And you have the value of A3 now. And then, to get the values of accelerations of other masses, let's find first the values of tension B and tension A. Use equation 3 to find tension B. In equation 3, isolate tension B and after, substitute A3 on it. Simplify the equation. Simplify, simplify, simplify until it remains as one term. Observe the properties of basic operations. Then, you have now the value of tension B. After this, we can now find tension A. Use equation 4 to find the value of tension A. Substitute the value of tension B to get tension A. And after that, simplify the equation. Then, you have the value of tension A. And lastly, we can now find the values of A1 and A2. To find A1, we will use equation 1. Isolate A1 by dividing both sides by M1. Then, substitute tension A to it. Simplify the equation. Make sure that you factor G out of the two existing terms so that it would be easier to see. Simplify it until it turns to only one term. To make it simpler, factor out for M2. Then you have now the value of A1. On getting the value of A2, it has the same process as A1. To find A2, use equation 2. Isolate A2, divide both sides by M2, substitute TA to it, simplify the equation, factor out G, simplify it until it becomes only one term, factor out for M1 to make it simpler. And there you have it. We have now the different accelerations of different masses found in the double Atwood machine. And that's all for our tutorial. Thank you.